Hello, cooking enthusiasts. This is part two of my Koji series for this year. In this video, I'm going to talk about fermenting things beyond rice with Koji, with an emphasis on meat and charcuterie, because fermenting beans and grains is pretty similar to rice. When it comes to fermenting meat with koji, I'm going to categorize things into two broad categories, koji aging and koji charcuterie. Koji aging I'm defining as relatively short-term fermentation of meat that you intend to cook, and in the case of beef, this is meant to somewhat replicate dry aging. And koji charcuterie, of course, is taking a fairly standard charcuterie recipe and adding a koji fermentation step. This would either add to or replace certain molds that might be involved in a traditional recipe. Both of these techniques rely on the fact that koji is a very fast growing and enzymatically active fungus. It very quickly removes moisture and breaks down proteins in the meat relative to many other aging processes. So, if we're taking steak as an example, incubating a piece of beef with koji for two days and letting it rest in the fridge for maybe an additional one or two days is going to create a similar level of transformation than 30 to 45 days of dry aging. However, the direction of the transformation isn't necessarily going to be the same. Of course, I didn't do steak. I did beef heart and spam. For the spam, I left it pretty much as is before the fermentation. And for the beef heart, I did a very light cure on most of the pieces. Specifically, what I did, and what you should do with any beef or other protein that you're going to be aging short term and eventually cooking, is putting it in an excess amount of equal parts salt and sugar for between 10 to 20 minutes, depending on how large the piece is. Normally, I don't like this technique of curing based on time with an excess amount of salt or sugar, but the goal isn't to precisely season the meat, but literally just get some salt and sugar into the surface of the tissue. For one piece of beef heart, I was going in more of a charcuterie direction, and a day before, I put it in a Ziploc in the fridge with 5% salt by weight and 0.25% curing salt number two. 
Either way, no matter what style of koji meat you're making, the next step is the same. You coat everything very thoroughly in rice flour and then put it into an incubation setup. Obviously, I recommend sous vide, similar to how I made koji rice. As I mentioned in the last video, I was doing all of this relatively at the same time, so I was able to use 24 hour old koji rice to inoculate all of my protein based fermentations. Personally, it is my preferred method because I'm confident that the koji is nice and active, but if you want to ferment meat directly from spores, what I would do is coat all of your meat in rice flour first, and then do a second layer of rice flour that's been mixed with your koji spores. Either way, you want inserts, pots, even big stainless steel bowls or trays that comfortably fit in or on top of your immersion circulator setup, and it should be set between 30 and even 33 Celsius. Similar to the rice, I let everything incubate for two days total. Twice a day, I checked on it, made sure there wasn't any bald spots, and added rice flour as needed. Once the two days is done, things should either go in the fridge, get cooked right away, or in the case of charcuterie, get hung up for aging based on the recipe. Now I am going to briefly talk about some of the tasting notes I had from my spam and my fermented beef heart. The spam is actually something I did last year and was so impressed with I had to do it again. Super savory, super rich, delicious, and it transforms it to more of a pate flavor and quality as opposed to just processed pork. The beef part was interesting, probably something I wouldn't recommend for most people, but it is something I really enjoyed. Normally, it tastes like just super clean, lean beef, but the koji definitely transformed it. It did take on more of an organ liver flavor, which again, I didn't mind, and definitely had a quality almost like it had been marinated in soy sauce and miso. It was also significantly more tender, and that flavor transformation really permeated the entire piece of meat and wasn't just on the surface. So I do recommend it for a normal steak or other piece of beef. Finally, a quick note on charcuterie. Obviously, I can't comment on the current batch of projects because they are still aging, but I can lay down some advice 
based on my experience last year. In some sense, clergy charcuterie is kind of advanced, but at the same time, there are some things that are a bit more forgiving compared to normal charcuterie. Just in my experience, it allows meat to age in not necessarily ideal temperature and humidity compared to other charcuterie recipes. It also ages much faster. And that being said, I would recommend definitely having some experience with charcuterie first. Also, definitely follow a recipe in addition to adding the koji step, including using the appropriate salt. Finally, I would say things with a large surface area like pork belly, and I suspect sausage as well, definitely has a distinct koji flavor at the end. Whereas larger pieces of meat simply age faster. I think that's enough rambling for this video. If you have questions about the soy sauce or the grains, please let me know, but I think the procedure is similar enough to the rice that it doesn't necessarily warrant its own video. And of course, if you have any questions about koji meat, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you for watching.